Crinkle cookies start with the chocolate. I've melted six ounces of dark chocolate. Now this is couverture chocolate. It's meant for baking, and that's what makes these crinkle cookies just so soft and rich in the center. Yet, they have a nice thin crispy layer on the outside. I'm going to set this aside to cool a little bit, but I can still work with it warm. Now you need electric beaters or a stand mixer for this cookie recipe because I want to whip my eggs and sugar together to give them volume and structure so that I don't need wheat flour. I'll break two eggs into my mixing bowl and I'll add half a cup of granulated sugar. I might as well add my vanilla now, a teaspoon, my next ingredient, my secret ingredient, balsamic vinegar. I'll measure in a teaspoon and what this does is help promote that crinkle on the outside of the cookie and develop that beautiful thin crust. Now I'll mix this on high speed for about two to three minutes until it's light and frothy. It doesn't have to reach a particular stage like a ribbon stage. It's cookies after all. Here we go. So the egg mixture has gone kind of a creamy consistency, kind of light and butter colored, so I know it's ready. And now I'm actually gonna use my whip attachment to work in my melted chocolate. Every last drop of that. If you're just starting out making flourless cookies, a chocolate cookie is a good place to start because the chocolate, as it cools, sets. And that's what gives a chocolate cookie its structure, so you don't need or miss wheat flour at all. But even though the cookie is flourless, you still need dry ingredients. In this case, I have a combination of icing sugar and cocoa powder. One cup of icing sugar. I'll also add half a cup of cocoa powder, so it intensifies the chocolate flavor and this adds the structure that replaces the need for a wheat flour. I add a tablespoon of cornstarch, and this helps to keep the crinkle cookie nice and soft in the center. Half a teaspoon of salt. I'll sift this right in over top of the whipped eggs with the chocolate. And I just stir until it's combined. These crinkle cookies are all about the chocolate. I've got the melted chocolate, I've got the cocoa powder, so why not add more chocolate? Three ounces of dark chocolate chips. Now I'm all set to scoop. Got two baking trays lined with parchment. And to highlight the crinkle as it's baking, I roll the cookies in icing sugar. I like to use an ice cream scoop. I drop the scoop right into my icing sugar. And just give them a little roll around to fully coat them shake off the excess and drop them on your tray. You want to leave room in between the cookies because they will expand. The last thing you do before they go in the oven is use the palm of your hand to press each cookie flat. Pressing the cookies flat just helps them take that shape and get a better crinkle. You know what, like this, these crinkle cookies remind me of chocolate truffles. So just imagine that chocolate intensity of a truffle. That's what these cookies taste like. All right, these are ready for the oven, which I've preheated to 375, and they only take 10 minutes. You don't want to overbake them. You want to keep those centers nice and soft. Oh, I love seeing the crinkle on the tops of these cookies. Oh, look at these. Here they are cooled. Now, what I like to do is take them off of the baking tray about a couple of minutes out of the oven. Right out of the oven, they're still a little fragile, but I don't want them to overcook. I want them to stay nice and soft. Isn't that a textbook crinkle cookie? And you'd never guess there wasn't wheat flour in there. A little crispy on the outside. Mmm. Pass me a glass of milk. 